I recently started analog film photography with this camera right here and this film is getting more and more expensive. I wanted to give it a try and actually develop and scan my film right here in my home and wanted to let you guys in on the process and how I did it because it could be a bit daunting at first but I assure you it gets better and better every time you do it. So here's my step-by-step -step guide on how I developed my first two rolls of film at home. So before I started, I looked at a couple of other YouTube videos and started a long list of all the stuff that I need. And this is actually the first part of this video. Starting out with two rolls of color film, a canister opener, blacked out bottles for the chemicals so they don't spoil over time, the Patterson Universal developing tank, uh, some gloves, a measuring cup, a funnel, the Patterson film bag, a sous vide cooker instead of the Cinestil uh, water heater because it's basically the same thing but a lot cheaper. The sous vide cooker does one thing, it keeps the chemicals and the water at a precise heat which is necessary for a good developing process. I got the Cinestil two bath color set, scissors, a squeegee to wipe off water from the film when it's developed, clamps for holding the film while it's drying, I got those at a Home Depot and some sort of stopwatch, I used my phone, and distilled water. I don't think it's necessary, but I think it was a good idea for creating the chemicals. Part two is preparing the chemicals, which took me about 20 minutes. I put on some gloves and made sure I had a well-ventilated room. What I didn't see in the beginning was that the water you use to make the chemicals should be at a certain temperature, so be sure to check the temperature on them before you start. Starting off with the developer, I simply followed the instructions in the booklet. I filled the liquid from the measuring cup into the bottles and labeled it with a white marker, both the cap and the bottle. This is important so you don't confuse them and the developer doesn't come into contact with the blicks as the blicks would ruin the developer immediately. For the blicks, I followed the same process. Part three is getting the film loaded. I prepared everything to put into the Patterson black bag and I started off by opening the canister with the opener and after I took the film out of the canister I needed this one trick that nobody told me before so it took me forever to get the spools loaded. And the trick is the following. You just simply cut off the end with a 45 degree angle on both sides so it makes it easier to get the film loaded onto the spools. After I loaded both spools with the film, I put it into the tank on top of each other and closed it up. So now it is sealed and no light can come into contact with the film and you can take it out of the bag. Part four is developing the actual film. I got my stopwatch ready and filled the tank with the developer until I saw the liquid in the tank. I forgot to agitate the film for the first 10 seconds, which just means you stir it with this stick. After that, I did inversions for 30 seconds and then let it rest for 30 seconds and repeated this process until 3 minutes and 30 seconds have passed. The Cinestil bath lasts for about 20 developments, so the more you do, the longer you should go with the developer. I put the developer back into the tank and put the blicks into the tank and did the same procedure, but now for a total of eight minutes. The last step is to simply rinse the tank with water seven times. Then I took the film out and hung it up to dry and I used a squeegee to get rid of initial water spots. The drying takes about two to three hours depending on humidity and make sure there is as little dust as possible in the air in the room you let your film dry. For the scanning, I used the Negative Supply Co Stand a level cube for the camera, my 100mm macro lens at an f-stop of 8 as I was told this was the sharpest, a remote shutter button to avoid shake, my Canon R5 and a really really dark room. Taking pictures of the film is very efficient, but make sure that there is as little dust on the film when scanning as you need to take care of it otherwise in Photoshop. To convert my RAW files I used the Lightroom plugin from Negative Lab Pro and I need a lot more trial and errors with this as there are many parameters 
how you can actually uh, convert your negatives to the positives, but it was fun to try it out. And here are the results. I'm far away of being good at this, but I still love the process so much. And I hope it has some value for you and your process or your decision-making process at least. Um, if you liked the video, consider subscribing. That's all from me, guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.